Predators who salvaged their marriage from the brink of divorce. What's your story and how's it going now? Story one, husband played wow, a lot. We had two kids. I was miserable and controlling. I went to therapy for myself and got some emotional tools on how to deal with life. It was mind blowing. I also learned how to not let fear dictate my decisions. Husband noticed. I basically went from controlling and nagging and a mean sobbing mess to calm, independent, and in some ways less caring. He got nervous and agreed to go to therapy. He went for two sessions. Basically, he got his view of reality called into question. I swear our therapist was like a non-evil Hannibal Lecter. He was good at getting to the heart of things, but both myself and my husband were desperate for change. My husband stepped up, and I stepped down from trying to micromanage his life. Life is good. Story 2. I caught my wife chatting with someone else online. When I called her on it, she said she knew I was talking to someone else too. We had been, emotionally, cheating on each other because we felt like we weren't getting what we needed from the marriage. We realized that if we just took the effort that we were spending on the other people and spent it on each other, we'd be happy and getting what we needed. Now our marriage is really amazing. Story 3. I had surgery. I know it sounds weird. I'm a female, make the most money, work the most, etc. My husband also works but has very few skills and smokes candy a lot because of back pain. So anytime he does get an interview for something better, they candy test and he doesn't get the job. We also have a son with autism. We aren't having more kids. When my son turned eight, I got my tubes out so I couldn't. Every day is exhausting and honestly, neither of us were happy. I never wanted close relationship because I was tired. He wanted it all the time. He snapped about everything. I shut down about everything. We had our 10 year anniversary and I knew I wanted a divorce. I has a ball reduction because of pain issues that were affecting my work. That surgery is serious stuff. I prepared having to go at my recovery with no help. I was delusional. I was a mess afterwards. I didn't want to ask him for help at all. He turned into a different person. He helped me in the bathroom, took me in the shower to help me, drove me to all of my appointments, made me food, checked on me every 20 minutes. Never once did he get impatient with me. Four weeks after my surgery, I felt really lovely from my surgery. I was in a good mood. I liked how I looked in the mirror. I asked him if he liked how I looked. He looked like a dog staring at a treat. I told him I wanted close relationship. Ever since then, things are totally different. I don't know exactly what happened. Maybe him realizing that attention to me matters and showing care. And I realized I needed to give up control. Now we make a little date time. We have close relationship one. Two times a week. It had been about once a month before. We laugh with each other. I talk to him when I'm frustrated instead of trying to solve everything by myself. But it's pretty awesome. Story four. Go back 17 years ago, we had a young son. He was my dream child. I lost my focus on my husband and centered entirely on my son. My husband never said much. I was so tired too. All I wanted to do after working 9, 10 hours was sleep. He had a job he hated and works 10 hours a day too. We forgot to be in love. Period. I nagged a lot and he just ignored me. I caught him telling our problems to a stranger on the internet. I asked for a divorce. It was around January. I said we would let my son finish the school year and I would leave in June. After that, we coexisted as friends. We had been together for 16 years, so that wasn't hard. Our parents knew we were divorcing and they didn't understand because we were such good friends. Around March, we were bored. We wanted to go out to dinner and a movie. I asked my mom to babysit. It was just as friends. I actually took the time to get ready. He did too. We went to dinner and then the movie. By habit, I just grabbed his hand. He never said anything, but just stroked the back of my hand and never let go. We got back into the car. It was late, so we let our son stay overnight. I don't know what happened that night but I felt something I had never felt before. I was holding on to my best friend and I wasn't going to let go. We went home and just held each other. Divorce was never mentioned again. In my own head, I realized that I had to put him first. He needed me too. I balanced my time and he learned to give me the reassurance that I needed to feel loved. As I currently watch him sleep with a seven-year-old between us, I know that our marriage is about as perfect as a marriage can be. We have both forgiven and accepted each other's faults. My advice to you, one, Make one date a month. Make it special. Two every three, four months, plan to go out of town for a night. Act like teenagers. I can't tell you how much I need these nights. We go to concerts, ball games, casinos, or even just camping. Five, don't argue about something that won't matter in one month. If he didn't take out the trash, will that really matter? Four, learn to enjoy each other's bodies. I had gained weight and lost all self-esteem. Once I realized that he wasn't looking for perfection, just attention, things changed. I wasn't happy with what I looked like and who have slowly improved. My son is getting married. His soon-to-be wife told him he wanted marriage just like his parents had. This told me everything I needed to know. We had made it. Story 5. This is going to be a long one for you. I struggle with physical affection. 
I am very verbally affectionate, but for my husband, it wasn't enough. This wasn't the cause, but an instigator. My husband has bipolar depression with compartmentalization syndrome. For a very long time, he refused to admit he needed help. We had many up and downs during the beginning of the marriage, but always kept trying. He finally had a full breakdown and admitted himself to a mental facility. When he got out, things were amazing. He was getting treatment for most of his illness, except the depression. He lost his job. It was only me working, and he was home with our son doing nothing. He found a woman online. I found out, and he told me he didn't love me anymore. I didn't kick him out. He had nowhere to go, no job, no money, and we had a child, and he needed to be in his life. I made him move into our guest room, and I live in a state where there isn't any legal separation per the courts. So we made our own agreement. Obviously, the online thing went nowhere, and I told him flat out, no dating, online or IRL, until he moved out. I was not going to pay for him to fudge around on my dollar. We treated each other as roommates. Then July of 2016. We found a mass on my ovary. It might have been cancer. It's not, thank the gods, but the scare made me realize a lot about myself. How I didn't treat him like the love of my life. How being affectionate wasn't just close relationship. And there was more I could do than just say, I love you. The scare also kicked him into gear. He worked harder with his therapist. Realized he did love me. It was his depression going untreated that was a huge cloud on his emotions. So we started slow. Dating again from square one. Two years later, we are doing amazingly. I am way more affectionate. He is way more verbal with what is going on in his head. And we still date. Story six. Long story short, I had a poor upbringing, which led to me being a poor young adult with no idea about how to be a good partner. For years, I never lived up to being even 10% of the wife my husband deserved. After a really bad fight one weekend about six years in, he was done. My devastation was all-encompassing. I laid in bed for two days straight sobbing and wanting to pass away. He decided that he wanted to continue trying, and when he told me, I fell to my knees sobbing. I don't deserve him, but I am fighting every day to be the best wife I can be. Things have been better in the 1.5 years since. I have sought treatment for my depression and started getting serious about taking responsibility for the things I have done wrong in our marriage. And I plan fun and interesting dates for us at least a few times a month. We have worked on the friendship side of our relationship, and that has been game-changing. So overall, I'm optimistic, but I still carry a lot of guilt for not treating him the way he deserved for so long. Story 7. We had two kids in diapers, and we were working opposite schedules so that we could care for them without resorting to daycare. He called me at work to say we're both not happy. We should separate, and without any emotional tears or anything, I said I'm not flipping doing this alone, so get over yourself. Then I to the sky up the phone. Tomorrow is my 30th anniversary. The kids are grown and successful, and we love each other more than we ever have. Story 8. We just got married a week ago, sitting on our honeymoon reading this thread. It is so helpful to read what others did to pull themselves out of these situations. You worry about how your relationship evolves and hope it will be strong. This initiated a wonderful discussion between my husband and I, so thank you all. Story 9. My wife and I got married fairly quickly. We both didn't have a great upbringing. We didn't really have an idea of what a healthy relationship should look like. Both of us had abusive relationships in the past. I was unable to effectively communicate my feelings to her. She always thought that she needed to prepare for the worst. So when we would have an argument, I would shut down. She would reach out to ex-boyfriends looking for reassurance. I found out about her talking to other men several times. The last time I had had enough, I told her I wanted a divorce. She asked me to go to counseling with her. The first session was a train wreck. I almost left her that night, and she thought we weren't going to make it. After a few sessions and some very hard conversations we learned to communicate, I learned to open up. She learned that her behavior was destructive. It definitely wasn't easy to overcome, and I would say it's a miracle that we're still together. I'm so very glad that we worked it out. Story 10. Warning, it's long. Been married almost 10 years, almost lost my marriage twice due to my instability and crazy mood swings. I was cycling between mania and depression about 7 one two years ago. My husband was stressed out dealing with me. A bad church situation as a preacher and two jobs. We were strained and we were so close to just giving up. We pretty much were roommates for a few months, then he got a job opportunity in another state, which took stress off of him, and my mood settled down. We thought all was well. I was controlling my moods as best I could without a diagnosis. Five years ago, new state I was working. He was working. We hardly saw each other. My mood and health started declining again. I took it out on him by distancing myself, staying with my family and just being a witch. We were within probably weeks of divorce again, and I got a tip to go to a doctor, get checked out, and then see a therapist. I saw a doctor got a diagnosis of bipolar disorder type 1, started medication, and seeing a therapist. I also was dealing with seizures of unknown origin, and once I got my diagnosis and started therapy, 
I was given tips on how to manage my mood swings, started medication, and rebuilding our marriage. A month after I started all of the medication, got my seizures under control, they're stress-induced, I'm on medication for it still, I found out I was pregnant after an infertility diagnosis. My husband and I focused on rebuilding our relationship and focusing on being husband and wife and becoming parents. It took a lot of hard work on both of our parts and tons of soul-searching, but we made it through it. We met and married in four months of meeting, so we struggled especially as he is nine years older than me. I was in my 20s when we married and he was in his 30s, so it was immaturity on my part and as I grew as person, dealt with chronic illness and now mental illness, it changed me and it took both of us recognizing it and understanding that it changed our marriage that we were able to survive the near split twice. Now we are stronger than ever, like it's absolutely amazing how far we've come in almost 10 years of marriage. We made it and we work together. He's my accountability partner, making sure my meds are taken daily, checks in after my appointments. It's wonderful looking back how much we almost gave up. Story 11. When we married, we were virgins. We had saved Pivy for marriage. My wife had pain on our honeymoon due to my above average size. She didn't tell me. She seemed to enjoy our honeymoon close relationship. This pain caused my wife to completely reject close relationship for several months. After one year of marriage, we had intercourse 11 times. My wife never would talk about our close relationship life. I tried to figure out what was wrong, but she continued to say that everything was good and she didn't want close relationship unless she was in the mood. She also wouldn't allow me to do anything to turn her on. We had close relationship about once a month. This continued for years. We had children, and during the pregnancies, we didn't have close relationship at all. After the pregnancies, we seldom had close relationship. Some years, we had close relationship three times. I continued to wait because our children were young. I hoped that when the children were older, our close relationship life would improve. Ten years into our marriage, I decided that something had to change. We had a big talk, and during this talk, my wife explained that on our honeymoon, close relationship was painful, and that caused her to not want close relationship or anything that might lead to close relationship. No hand-holding, no kissing, no cuddling. I was starved for physical affection. I asked if she had any pain or discomfort now when we have close relationship, and she said no, but she's still worried. After this talk, frequency bumped up and then went back to once a month. I read everything I could find to try to improve our close relationship life. Nothing I ever tried worked. My wife complained about being too stressed. I hired a maid. We went on great tropical vacations. I went on the vacations. I took over many chores at home even though I was working a full-time professional job. My wife worked part-time. She worked 16 hours a week. Nothing I tried helped. We went on dates. I sent flowers. I wrote her cards and notes. For many years, I tried everything I could find. Eventually, our kids were independent and driving. They didn't need us as much. I thought there was hope that our close relationship life would improve. We continued to vacation and date with no improvement. We went to a marriage counselor with the hope that they could help us. We learned to communicate better. We learned some skills to better talk about close relationship. After the counselor dismissed us, she told my wife if she couldn't improve our close relationship life that she should give me an amicable divorce. Soon after the sessions were over, our close relationship went back to once a month. I was miserable. My love language is physical touch. My wife never touched me and our kisses were quick pecks. I began for the first time considering divorce. We had been married about two decades. We had never had a good close relationship life. Our kids were grown and independent. It was time for a change. I made plans. Financially, we were well off and divorce would not be bad for either of us. I would give my wife half of everything and our house. I would move into an apartment close by. I hoped we could still be friends. I still loved her more than anything. My wife saw my distance and asked if I wanted a divorce. We had a long talk and discussed separating. I would move out after Christmas in a month. Several weeks later, my wife began initiating close relationship every night. At first, it seemed like duty close relationship, but within a few weeks, the close relationship became passion-filled. The very frequent close relationship seemed to raise my wife's libido. She made a 180-degree change. Our recovery happened about five years ago. We continue to have frequent close relationship. We've had close relationship five times since Thursday. Our close relationship life is alive and vibrant. Story 12. I'll bite. Marriage was a cow show. We were both still immature in several ways. Things got bad. There was lying, fighting, yelling, verbal, and psychological abuse. Divorce was used as a threat, and so was custody of our kids. Husband was having an emotional affair with his ex-wife. We reached a tipping point when during an argument in which I was told my opinion was wrong, and I needed to change it or be gone within the week. I left the next day. We fought more. We both filed for divorce. We had one hearing where we talked about custody to the judge. Time passes, my lawyer had everything ready to finalize it, and all it needed was my signature. I opted not to have it filed and not to sign. During the three years we were separated, we continued to talk on the phone. I let him see our kids as much as possible. 
We were hundreds of miles apart, 12 hours driving. My car would not have made the trip. His was in better condition. He may have been a cow husband, but he's always been a good dad. We talked and talked. We both sought therapy individually. We grew up. Eventually, he moved back and I moved back in. We've continued to work on our marriage, so we never get to where we were. As for right now, things are okay. We're not perfect people, but we're making it through. Story 13. I shared my story in our off my chest a few days ago, but I feel like it should be shared here too. I'm 34M, married to 33F. Long story short, I was a very heavy drinker for 15 plus years. Verbally abusive to my wife when drunk. Wife lost father from cancer the same year we married. Lost her mother the following year due to unknown cause, possibly heart issue. We had a kid. June 2016, my wife's sister gave birth. Then unexpectedly, her sister passed away a week later. I started drinking more heavily and ramped up my verbal abuse. My wife suppressed her feelings and said she was used to death now. End of August 2016, she says she wants a marriage break. I didn't want a break. Early September 2016, I decide to quit drinking cold turkey, average 15 drinks a day down to zero, and start working out. One week later, I find out she's having an affair. The affair continued for six months on and off, but I maintained my sobriety and tried to convince her I changed the whole time. She never believed me and expected me to revert back to my old ways. December 2016, we were headed for divorce. February 2017, the affair had ended a month prior. She's gone through a lot of therapy at this point. She started going weekly in November 2016, and we decided to try and give our marriage another. We did marriage consoling bi-weekly and started to get to know the new U.S. individually and as a couple. That April, I started school again after a 10-year hiatus. Today, 9-27-18, I'm down to 170 pounds from 220. This weight was actually all lost in the first couple months after finding out about the affair. I'm 80% of the way done with my bachelor's degree. Wife and I are more in love than we ever have been since knowing each other, and we're expecting our second child in one week. I'm still sober with no outside help. I did it in silence and I'm oh no proud of myself. Two years ago at this time, I wouldn't have believed this was possible, but I pushed through and I'm making good decisions finally. I was a banana and didn't deserve the beautiful woman who put up with my daily drinking and verbal abuse for over five years. She shouldn't have cheated and maybe some think I should have my ties, but I made the choices I made and I stand by them. I love her. My wife and I finally found our true selves and our marriage is stronger than it's ever been. We were both in the wrong for different reasons but we worked hard and fixed everything that we could. Just wanted to get this off my chest because I feel accomplished. I'm finally happy with my life and where it's going for the first time since youth. Keep your head up. Most nonsense in life is just a phase unless you make it bigger than it should be. Stay focused. Story 14. Over 20 years, the relationship became more and more emotionally abusive, which I didn't recognize until I saw a psychologist. She helped me and also suggested that my husband was suffering from depression. A very serious ultimatum forced him to get psychiatric help, but it took a few years to find the right doctor, get him on the right meds, and for us both to understand our roles in the messed up relationship we were in, and to learn to communicate effectively. Seven or eight years later, I can honestly say we are happy together. I would never advise anyone to stay in an abusive relationship, but if you really can't leave, at least get professional help. Story 15. Words of Stephen R. Covey from the book, Seven Habits of Highly Successful People. This changed my paradigm about my marriage. My wife and I just don't have the same feelings for each other we used to have. I guess I just don't love her anymore and she doesn't love me. What can I do? The feeling isn't there anymore? I asked. That's right, he reaffirmed. And we have three children we're really concerned about. What do you suggest? Love her, I replied. I told you the feeling just isn't there anymore. Love her. You don't understand. The feeling of love just isn't there. Then love her. If the feeling isn't there... That's a good reason to love, but how do you love when you don't love? My friend, love is a verb. Love, the feeling is a fruit of love, the verb. So love her, serve her, sacrifice, listen to her, empathize, appreciate, affirm her. Are you willing to do that? Story 16. My wife and I did go full divorce and have been remarried just shy of a year after a year apart. We had as multitude of problems. She thought I was controlling as did I with her. After our daughter was born, she had postpartum depression and it came out in the form of super unpleasant person to me and crazy perfectionism. I didn't have the tools to deal with it, so I shut her out, and it spiraled out of control from there. After a year apart, we both realized what each person had been contributing to each other's lives and talked it out. It's far too much to type, but both of us had a lot of growing to do. We're doing much better. Story 17. We had some issues. Truth be told, they weren't even big ones, but we had no idea how to work through them. Her from past very abusive relationships and I from past relationship cheating and disowned from family. We both obviously loved each other beyond anything else but were incredibly unhappy. 
When we tried to talk, it turned into fights and tuning each other out. The unending fights that would get nowhere turned into just ignoring the problems, and we just avoided each other. One day, I woke up to go to kitchen, and she was packing her stuff to leave, and she had started divorce papers. I was devastated, and it made me realize we were getting divorced over such small matters. I refused to let it go through, and she finally agreed to try again on account we read this book together. I hate therapy, been betrayed by my therapist in past, and self-help books, but was desperately trying to get this worked out, so I agreed to both. I attribute our reconciliation 100%, besides our efforts, to this book. It completely opened my eyes and why was going on and how we had to communicate. I buy it for every newlywed couple friends I know. One book each. It's science-backed, not opinion, which rally helped me believe. Full of workbooks to do together. We went chapter by chapter together and talked and did the exercises, and we learned so much about each other even after being together over 10 years. It truly saved us, and we know how to communicate and even more importantly know the warnings of what makes an unhealthy relationship. I strongly encourage everyone to read it. The Seven Principles for Making Marriage Work by John M. Gottman, Ph.D. Story 18. I don't know that we're super far from the brink, but long story, and sadly familiar to many, short, he was a sneaky drunk. Hid his boozing and fallout from me. He went to rehab. I took him there. It was voluntary on his part, but one of the most hellish trips of my life. Some days I remind myself that staying married to him, working through my resentment and anger and legitimate distrust is my choice. I can either do it or not. What do I want to choose? He knows that I'm making this active choice. He chooses not to use alcohol, to work on himself, to do all the things that help him stay sober. That is his choice. Knowing it's a choice for me is liberating. I've seen what it looks like when my spouse is gone, when I'm raising our kid on one income, alone. I've seen it. I've done it. I know it's not the end of the world. If I choose that path, I'll be okay. So, for now, I'm choosing to do some hard work on myself, to acknowledge and own the hurt and anger and resentment, and to work though it. Because even if we don't end up married at the end of the day, I don't want that cow hanging over my head. Or his. Neither of us deserve it. Day by mother flipping day. Story 19. My dad took sweets for decades before I was born and before they married. In 2017, my mom was tired of a lot of things. She never said what it was. And went to Missouri with a friend no one knew about. My dad stopped doing sweets that day. When she came back, we took my dad to rehab, and now he's been clean ever since then. Story 20. Warning, really long story, I did that cliche movie thing where my husband comes home from work and finds his wife, me, sitting at the kitchen table with a drink gesturing at the other chair like, have a seat, we need to talk. I basically laid out everything that was wrong with our relationship and family life, and there was a lot. I had thought a lot about it all for literal years, married for nine years at that point, but obviously, the communication was so far deteriorated that I hadn't brought any of this up. He took it very much in stride and said, that's fixable. I'll fix it. I was silent and looked down. He said, unless you don't want it to be fixed. Are you telling me you want a separation? I had wanted a separation, but I couldn't bring myself to tell him that. This conversation was going differently than I expected. I thought he'd jump at the chance to leave me. I thought he hated me. So I said, well, no. And we talked some more and made plans to improve our relationship. Several days after that, we were out having dinner, and I was too distracted by my thoughts about our poor marriage to have a good time. He noticed and asked what was wrong. I said, you expect everything to improve overnight. Nothing is better. I feel the same. After a bit of angry back and forth, we got the check and stormed home. We live walking distance from the restaurant we were at, so we angrily power walked home. It must have been comedic to people who were watching. Everything. Everything came out that night. All the ways that he had wronged me as far back as 10 years ago that he had never apologized for or acknowledged, all the way up to the present. He said, why now? Why are you telling me this now? What has changed? Has longtime friend of mine pitted you against me for some reason? And so the truth came out. I said, I met someone else. It was true. I'd met someone else. And it was mainly an emotional affair, though we exchanged pictures. And But what struck me was how differently they both treated me. I mean, long story short, it was like night and day. To put it very simply, the other guy respected my time and made me feel like I had value as a person separate from making him happy, whereas my husband did not make me feel like that. I had not wanted to tell my husband about the affair. The other guy and I were not going to get together and were in fact starting to end our relationship. So telling my husband would be just pointless and hurtful. I mainly told him in order to clear my poor friend's name, he really thought she was trying to get me to divorce him, and to put the nail in the coffin of our relationship so I could just move the fudge on. That was actually the turning point of the evening. He told me that it didn't line up with who he knew me to be, which was a good, honest, faithful person. He said that I must have felt really backed into a corner to turn to infidelity, 
and that actually made him sit down and examine how he had been acting for the past 10 years. As for how he had been acting, he was a workaholic who had literally zero time for family life, including fun, interesting conversations about non-work-related things. He never came with me to visit my family, hardly spent time with our son, expected me to do everything around the house, which I didn't really mind, except he would complain terribly when it wasn't up to his standards, instead of just fixing things to his liking without complaining. For example, he would complain to me about a sock being on the floor, rather than just picking it up as he walked by. He didn't listen to anything I said, and I had a running joke where if I wanted to end a conversation, all I had to do was talk longer than 30 seconds, because at that point he became very dismissive and would literally walk away. He would threaten me with divorce every time we had a fight. I eventually asked him to stop, and he more or less did, but occasionally laughed. His mother lived with us for years, and she was incredibly emotionally abusive in ways that I cannot and will not ever forgive. But whenever I brought it up with my husband, he got very defensive, defended her, and said that I was wrong for feeling the way I did. Most hurtful was the fact that he didn't work for a year by choice, and despite all of his free time, he did not spend a single day hanging out with me and our son. That was when I was convinced he didn't love me, and that's when I met the other guy, which spearheaded all of this. After that initial big conversation, we did a lot of soul-searching. I went on a trip planned long in advance to visit my family. It was one of those family trips that he never took with me, so he didn't have a ticket and therefore didn't come along. During our time apart, we thought a lot about what we wanted from our marriage and each other and whether we were willing to work on things, whether we were able to come back from the hurt we'd caused each other. We spent a lot of time texting and on the phone. On the day I was supposed to come back, we were both pacing and debating whether we actually wanted to see each other again. We decided to stay together and make it work. He has a better work-life balance and does things around the house. I speak up when things bother me. We have conversations about things that aren't work-related. He values what I say. He apologized for the way his mom treated me and for not acknowledging how hurtful it was, which made me feel like a huge load was lifted from my spirit. He said that he didn't even realize that's how he was acting all those years, that he was acting like a person he never wanted to be. I believe him. I always knew he had a good heart. I feel like his behavior now matches with who he is on the inside. I didn't know our marriage could be as good as it is now. If I had, I definitely would have tried to have that conversation years ago, preferably without the infidelity. Sorry, this was so long. Story 21. I am, and a lot more on the sapphic end of that spectrum than straight. I was raised in a very religious setting, though, and grew up believing I was going to hell for my attraction to women. So I spent a long time trying to prove to myself and the world that I really was straight. By the time I even admitted my attractiveness to myself, I was married and had two kids. My husband was, and is, my best friend, but I wasn't in love with him. I wrote in my journal about wanting a divorce so I could be with women and explore my attractiveness and emotional attraction to women and mostly so I wouldn't feel like I was living a lie. My husband had his one and only really big jerk moment and read that journal. We fought and argued and cried, and in the end, we agreed to give it another try as an open marriage. Then I could be with women and stay with him, and he could see other women too. That was 10 years ago, and now we have three children. Since then, I have truly fallen in love with him. Just for me, falling in love turned out to be a lot more about emotion than passion, and was a process that occurred over years. We still technically have an open marriage, but neither of us uses that prerogative anymore. I couldn't have asked for a better or happier relationship. Edit, wording for clarity. Story 22. When I was three months pregnant, he slowly became a nightmare. We started going to couples counseling, but it made everything worse. Like the therapist would mention something about adding value to each other's lives, and my husband would tell me later, I don't think you add any value to my life. That cow deep. First of all, I told him, make up your mind. Either you dump me completely or you commit to me and stop bringing up threatening divorce. Problem? He decided to commit, but had more personal issues, and just a bit later, I was the one ready to walk out. I refused to move back in until he got into individual therapy. He improved a lot, but not enough. It's like, you're doing better than before, but it's still hell to live with you. If you get a 3100 on a school test, then yeah, you did better than your previous 12100, but you're still failing the class. Then suddenly the baby arrived in a medical emergency. While the baby was in the NICU, I convinced my husband to still go to his therapy session. I considered it a break from the stress. I had also convinced him to go to a game event while I was still in the hospital. He had been amazing when I was in the hospital, bringing food, wheeling me around, sleeping on the hospital couch. He just dealt badly with stress. He came back and he was lighter. This therapy session was a group one and a lot of the men were divorced with kids. I guess it was an eye-opener. And then... He just became a good dad and a good husband. He stepped it up. Is he perfect? No, of course not. 
he's still struggling with a lifetime of bad habits. Just like I do, but he is amazing. I guess it's a rare case where having a baby did fix the relationship. I wonder if constantly being busy was good for his mental health. He had quit his job before and was quite aimless. I was expecting absolute hell and thought becoming a single mom would be easier than caring for my husband and a baby at the same time. The opposite happened. He's selling stuff online, doing most of the chores and most of the baby work, and he's a better communicator now than I am, more patient and reflective. Story 23. Almost a year ago, exactly my wife broke into tears panic attack saying she ruined our marriage. We were good friends with the family next door, who even had kids the same age as ours. For a couple weeks, the neighbor had been texting my wife all of the things he wanted to do with her. She told him no, but secretly enjoyed the attention and let it continue. He saw her at the gym one morning and started kissing her neck after walking out, which she let happen for a period of time. Eventually, she realized what she was doing, told him no, came home and confessed everything. For me, it was a huge breach of trust, and I gave my son a hug and walked out thinking it would be the last time we were a family. We had two toddlers and I was working in a new job. Marriage isn't easy when you add the stress of work and the constant attention needed by young children. I found out she had been going through a seven-year itch type feeling for a few months. I had noticed things were off and suggested she go to therapy or we both go. We eventually went on her own, but it didn't help much. My parents were divorced when I was two and I always wanted my kids to have the family life I didn't. I was devastated and more confused than anything. I couldn't look at our family photo for a while because it felt like everything was fake. I came home and talked it through with her. I was very torn because her actions and thought process were incredibly immature. But at the end of the day, she didn't let it go where he wanted it to, and she confessed everything to me which was very mature of her. She could have let the lie continue if that is what she wanted. She even had to confess to the neighbor's wife whom she was very good friends with. It disrupted our social life and we moved out of a house and neighborhood my wife loved. I was willing to work it out and we went to therapy, which was very helpful. I think all newlyweds should go twice a month for a year. If we did, then we may have avoided what we went through years later. One year down the road, we live across the country and welcomed our latest baby. We communicate better than ever and are happy. I still struggle with things and actually have a hard time hearing her say that she loves me and looking at pictures of us having fun around the time she was hiding her emotional affair. Life is confusing and never in white. Story 24. Getting my mother-in-law the hell out of our marriage and life. It was as simple as that. My wife was younger than me and really naive. It took a few years for my wife to see what a completely evil and narcissistic bad person that woman is. Don't let outside players into your marriage, especially family. Story 25. With me, it was as simple as quitting drinking. My go-to was half a bottle of whiskey every night. I couldn't see what the bad person was getting all worked up about. Then something came up and I quit drinking. Around the same time, almost every single problem with the missus just seemed to clear up. I stopped being a drunken, unpleasant person. And she mysteriously stopped being an uptight bad person. Must have been some kind of coincidence. Story 26. I'll keep this short. We were young and already started a family. We tried to be the perfect family and forgot to be ourselves. We didn't love each other and tried to find love and fulfillment somewhere else. When the cow hit the fan, he was ready to call it quits, but I begged for another chance. He agreed. At the time, he had to move away for two years for college. If he didn't move away, our marriage would have ended. We needed that space to find ourselves again and appreciate each other and our family. It's been four years since the reboot, and we're still kicking it. Story 27. We weren't quite married yet, but had plans to do so. Had been dating for years and living together for two. We had just moved and given away our cats due to a health scare. I was working nights and he was working days, so we rarely saw each other except at the very end of our respective days. He became severely depressed and took it out on me. We fought every day about the tiniest thing, but it became the world to him. I hated coming home because I knew we would fight, but staying at a friend's also meant we would fight. At some point, he asked me to hide all the dangerous objects in the house. I had been begging him to go to the free therapy offered by his job. I tried everything from cajoling, giving favors, crying. He finally gave in and the therapist gave him a letter to allow him to have an emotional support animal. Read, not one you take places, but it makes it illegal for apartments to evict you for having an animal unless they are aggressive, dangerous to other tenants. He didn't want to get a dog. The problems continued. Finally, I went to the shelter with a friend and found the perfect candidate. I went home and told him and he informed me he wasn't willing. So I gave him the only ultimatum I have ever given and still feel guilty for. No one should give an ultimatum in a relationship. Either he go look at the dog and try or I was taking my stuff and leaving. I cried. I told him how terrible he was being. I begged that he at least looked at her. We got the dog. His depression lessened a crazy amount within a week and now she's his favorite thing to see when he comes home from work. She saved his life and she is spoiled for it. We got married and stay happy because she's in our lives. 
All because Miss Wigglebottoms provides him the love and support he needs when I'm not there. Oofta, and she's getting a special treat tonight after I typed all of that out. Story 28. I'm not sure it was the brink of divorce, but a few weeks after we got married, we had our first major fight. Hours of fighting, arguing, and I couldn't deal with it, so I took the dog for a walk. We walked around the apartment complex for a few hours at like 2 a.m. And I was like, fudge, this is it. We didn't even make it a month. Eventually, I realize I'm cold and dog's tired, so I go back, thinking he'll apologize and sleep on the couch or whatever. I get back. Door is locked. I went out without my keys or phone. I knock. No answer. I sit down on the stairs to regret things and try to come up with something to do till morning. A few minutes later, wife pulls up in TGE car crying her eyes out. I thought you were dead. Why didn't you come back? And that's when I realized I'm about 75% dumbass. We're celebrating our two-year anniversary this weekend and just finished binging on The Good Place on Netflix. We highly recommend it. Story 29. My husband came home from Thailand in February and was just stone cold. I knew something was wrong, but every what's wrong I asked was deflected and work was used as an excuse. Maybe I'm crazy, but a few days of that and I had just had enough and needed to know. I wrote everything down in a letter and gave it to him before I went to bed. I knew he wasn't open to talking, so I thought this was the best way to open a conversation. He let me stew over it without saying a word for 24 hours until we sat down, and immediately he mentioned divorce. I was completely shocked. This came out of left field. We are in an unhappy situation, but I never thought the unhappiness was between him and I. Something still just didn't feel right. I went to use an old laptop of ours to job hunt. I was terrified of what was to come and trying to plan frantically. I opened up Google Chrome and immediately was blasted with a million messages from another woman. They had met each other through my husband's recent work trip to Thailand for less than a month, and they were already talking about marriage and how much they loved each other. Of course, immediately I am furious at both of them, her for knowing he is a married father of two young children, and him for knowing how much I have sacrificed for his benefit through our five years together. Of course, at this point, everything was the worst. He said some absolutely abhorrent things to me in an attempt to push me away, and it worked. I went back to the U.S. with our kids to try to figure out how to divorce him. Stupidly enough, I made a dumb decision after he told me she was gone for good, not through their own choices, but her family. And I went back home to attend counseling and see if we could make things better. At this point, we get back home and he's in the Philippines for another few weeks thanks to work. He gets home and nothing is different. I don't recognize him at this point. The goofy man I once loved is stone cold, closed off, and treats me like dirt. I find another Thai girl in his messages who also knows he is married, but he convinced her he was going to divorce me. And then I find another, this one from the Philippines who messaged him about going to the place he was staying for some fun. The most disheartening was he did not tell her no or try to blow her off. That was my breaking point. At this point, it's the end of May. I call him in frustrated tears and tell him he has two hours to purchase flights for myself and the two kids, or I will go straight to someone bigger than him with the proof. He acts confused, and I immediately pour everything out. Sobbing, breathless, our kids are next to me, crying with me. That was the point where he changed. He took counseling seriously. He set up new counseling on his own, read the entire Five Love Language book on his own, and came to me with healthy discussion. He genuinely seemed sorry. I am still trying to pick up my pieces and pick up our marriage pieces as well, but now instead of handling it on my own, he is helping too. I'll never truly know what it was, or maybe it's just that he's scared of my crazy, but even after everything, I don't want anyone else. Story 30. What saved us was a little bit of timing and a lot trial by fire. I would never, ever condone getting pregnant to save a marriage, but that's part of what helped us. We had been growing apart, both working a lot trying to save to buy a house. We never saw each other and stopped pursuing our shared interests. I think we both felt neglected and unfulfilled. It got so bad we went away together after I got home from a long work trip and I told him I was done. He talked me into giving it another. We agreed to stop working as much BC we had enough saved to start looking at houses. Well, within a week, we found our dream fixer upper. Then about a month after that weekend away, we found out I was pregnant. With the baby on the way and a house to get ready, we band together as a team and were reminded why we worked so well together. Then childbirth got complicated. I almost didn't make it. I spent the next year recovering from injuries from it cost. He was so perfect taking care of me and the baby. Again, we banded together. I fighting for my health, him fighting for us. Story 31. Really late to this conversation, but we both had brief marriages to people with addiction issues before we met. Very much in love, but young, poor, and with a lot of complicated issues we weren't equipped to handle. We struggled and had, at best, a very mediocre life together. The love wasn't really covering it after a few years. At about the 10-year mark, I was involved in a mass shooting. That event took all of our little issues and iffy connections and blew them the fudge up like a slow volcano. I really lost myself. 
It took a couple years, but we ended up breaking up. We split up for almost a year. A lot of things happened that I won't mention, but I will say I didn't do anything to make the situation better during that year. My wife, however, doggedly to the sky onto what fragments of our life together that she could. One day, something good happened. I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was a surprise, and by rote, I dialed my estranged spouse to tell her. It had been so long since some good fortune had hit me. We ended up talking for a while, then again a few days later, then she showed up at my place with some wine. That was about seven years ago. The road back hasn't been without bumps, but it's always been better than the first half. I think it's about perfect now, and we wouldn't trade what we have for anything. Story 32. Quit working shifts and nights took a big pay, got so meds for then depression, that work schedule caused got therapy for myself and as a couple, even though she didn't want to go, found out I'm am worth something after all and she loves me unconditionally. I'm now crying. Try every avenue, don't give up. Story 33. Reading this thread has me super depressed about my marriage. In pretty much all these situations, if it was me and my husband, I'd take the separation. I saved my marriage from the brink a few months ago, and part of me regrets it and still wants to leave. I have no idea how you other couples are still together. Story 34. My husband and I had dated for five years before getting married. We fought a lot about one thing during that time. His sister. He was her emotional husband and would frequently manipulate him into thinking what she did was normal. She sabotaged my bridal shower, took him to a strip club and bought him a lap dance for his 21st B-Day, told me his dead mom would he disappointed in his choice of a mate, to name a few. After we got married, I grew a backbone and candy him to therapy, kicking and screaming. After one session, the therapist told him it's his job to contain his family if they're being disrespectful and my job to contain mine. I told him we had friends getting a divorce because he wouldn't listen to her when she requested family, and now she doesn't love him. I said I still love him, but if this continues, I won't. And I'll leave. I deserve better. A week later, his sister called complaining about our wedding, and he went to her house and told her it was high time I was put first. She cried and threatened him. He didn't back down. We went through a deployment overseas and a kid and moved 1,000 miles away. It was the best thing for our marriage. We'll be celebrating 10 years in April.